Hi guys, this is Brandon with Fold Up Games. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you for asking. Today we're going to do a topic called top-down graphics. This is the way that we're going to make graphics work in kind of a semi-3D, faking it 3D, isometric kind of a world. If you've ever done that top-down thing, if it's Pac-Man and it's flat on, you're just looking directly down on the play field, it's fine. But what happens when you want to tilt the world and do kind of a, you know, isometric 3D? Uh, in case you follow me at all, you know I've been working on this game called Shield Worthy. And uh, we could jump in here. And we will just jump out into the world for a second. And I will show you what I mean. We're going to have the knight run over here. There's a tree over here. He can run around in front of the tree. Right? And then he can run around behind it. Okay. Now you could do this in several different ways. You could have the tree in different parts. You could build your world in 3D, which I don't think you really want to do uh, in this case because we're actually just faking it. It's a flat, top-down world, but we're just making it appear like we're going around the tree. Right? So let's jump in and follow a few simple rules on how to make that happen. And uh, this should be pretty introductory, even for those of you who are newer to, to Game Maker. I will keep it simple for you. Now, we've got our knight, and we've got a tree. It is knight versus tree, people. Knight and day. Knight and tree. Uh, he's running towards that tree. What's going to happen? Well, if he goes in front of the tree and he's below it in the, in the screen, you're going to be happy. Look at that. Oh, no, now you're, you're sad. He goes behind it. That doesn't look right. Now, if he were up higher on the screen and he went behind it, we're also happy. How do we get this to happen? Very easy. The whole trick is right here. Get out your number two pencils. You can stop the video after this. You'll, you'll get everything you need. Because depth matters. This is the whole trick. The depth in Game Maker, as it goes higher and higher, allows objects to pass in front of one another, to be stacked up in a layer. You see? This knight here is layered. If his depth is higher in the stack, in a lower, lower number, that puts him in front of the tree. Okay? If his depth goes higher like that, his depth is a larger number, he'd go behind the tree. So the lower the number, the higher it is in the stack. So imagine, just like we did in the other slide, this guy is on layer negative 500 versus the tree back there is on layer 800. Negative 500 is a lot less. You could also do it you know, more simply with positive numbers, but it makes more sense for us to do negative numbers, and I'll explain why. Because we are going to map that depth to their Y position. Stick with me if that lost you. We're going to go and do a demo, and it'll make a lot more sense. As you know, your game starts out at a Y level of 0 at the top of the screen. As your character moves down the screen, or anything is placed on the screen, its Y position goes higher and higher and higher, all the way up to 800 or in this case 800, pardon me, it goes all the way up to the height of your, your room. What we're going to do is flip it backward so that the depth, the layering, is the negative of that Y position. That is all the code we need to do. Okay? With that code, we're able to change their layer, their stacking, so that they go higher and higher and higher in the stack the further down the screen they go. We're going to do that in a demo, so Sit tight, and we will take a look at it. The next rule that we need to pay attention to, rule number two, origin point matters. Because we're going to be changing their depth according to their Y position, we need to make sure that we start out on a level playing field. Every object, every mob that you put out there, everything needs to start out in the same place. So I like to start at the bottom center of whatever the most important area, like this guy's feet, or roughly the base, the trunk of that tree. That way they both start out at the same depth. You know, if you start them both out at a depth of 800, then they're both at a depth of 800 together, and they can move around each other. The next thing we need to pay attention to is their masks. Their masks are going to come in big time. We don't want the knight to bump his head on the tree. We want it to seem like we're kind of looking down on him so that objects can pass behind his head and so that he can walk around behind the tree, but not quite through the tree. So we want to set the tree's mask to be something like what I drew there and the knight's mask to be something like what I drew uh, in that frame there. If you haven't done that before, it's very, 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 very simple. And we're going to do that uh, in just a second. This is what I'm talking about. The knight should be, you know, about up to his knees or so when he hits the tree. 
but we also want objects to be able to hit the knight. We don't want them to just, you know, be able to get hit in the knees. That wouldn't make sense. So if he's got an arrow flying towards him, we want it to appear to hit his chest. So his collision mass still needs to be kind of up his body a bit, whereas the trees, we can go ahead and raise the collision mask uh, on the trunk, and it'll still make sense. Got it? Good. Are you confused to death? That's all right. Let's jump over, and we will actually work on a game, and it'll make like, you know, three times more sense. At least three times more sense. Let's go ahead and hit play, and I've got a little game going with something very simple. You'll probably recognize this character. Hey, look, there he is again as the knight. Dun, dun. Don't you hate it when people start out a tutorial and start drawing everything and making everything work? It's like, just get to the point already. Now, he can move up and down, and I have got it drawing his Y position. So as he goes all the way up to the screen, his Y position gets all the way, in this case, up to 64. And you can't see because he went off the screen, but it would be 0 or negative. His Y position goes all the way down to you know 1,200 until he gets to the edge of the screen there. So his Y position is changing. That's what we're going to use to change his depth. Because, look at that, there's the problem we talked about. This is where we get the frowny face. Oh, no, I'm so sad. It's a tragedy. Let's go ahead and fix that. For those of you who want to know, I am using open broadcasting software, which is pretty great. All we're doing here, uh, for those of you who want to know, is drawing uh, at XY, we're drawing his Y. So what we're going to do is take that Y value and we're going to map it to his depth. This is the most complicated thing in, in all of it. We're going to do a step event. Here, I'll delete this, so we'll start again. Add event, step, step. Control, drag this code in, and just write this. Very easy. Depth equals negative y. You're done. You just coded a game. Aren't you happy? Now, do some cleanup and write a triple slash. Or something. Layer. Layer to depth. Depth to, uh, I don't know. That's just for you to be able to read it. Triple slash. Now it says depth to y on the card. Isn't that cool? We also need to do the same thing. I'm going to copy that. We're going to go over to the tree object, and we're going to do that on his create event. Same exact thing. I just pasted it in. Boom. Are you excited yet? I'm pretty excited to see what happens. This will probably need some fiddling. He's in front. He should go behind. Oh, come on, people. That's exciting right there. Now, if you want to test it, don't have any collision masks on it. Just see where he pops out. Because I had their Y position, their, um, pardon, their origin set, like I told you, to do, he should pop out in a really good spot there. Boom, boom. Because we just added the same thing onto the tree, what we can do, and uh, let, me have the, let me have the knight draw his uh, depth, just so we can see that it's going to the negative of his Y. We'll draw his depth. Uh, because I did the same thing on the tree when it's created, his depth goes to the negative y. We can open up the room. We can grab some trees. This is where it gets exciting. And we can start popping in a lot of trees. You can look at that. They're already uh, layering up. And uh, Game Maker usually, usually not always, does a pretty good job of uh, correctly layering them. Uh, it doesn't always, though. We've got ourselves a veritable forest going on. Da, 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 lost in the woods. I am lost in the woods. I am lost in the woods. I'm lost. Da. So as we can see here, he's going to be in front of some of these trees, like that one and that one. But as he walks up here, he will come up in behind of that one and in front of that one. There you go, guys. That's, that's really the entire thing. Once you start doing collisions and... Uh, I mean, we could do collisions here if you want to, uh, but let me do sprites instead uh, to look at the mo the masks. What we can do is modify the mask. Something that I really like to do is to create a player mask that just sticks with him all the time, so you actually have a separate sprite that's his mask. You can do that. We could do manual and just draw it like that. Uh, you got to watch it on this because, in this case, his center point is off to the side. we got to make sure that that mask actually centers up or else the sprite centers up. Or like I said, you can actually create a separate sprite and have the character uh, refer to a mask, which is pretty great. 
but we're not going to do that because it's a little outside the scope of this particular chat. And let's do the same thing on the tree. We're going to modify his mask, and we're just going to manually do it. And we'll draw it on there. And we'll add a collision event to this guy. Collision with the tree. Uh, I'll just code this real fast. We'll do x equals x previous y equals y previous. This is not really the uh, what the tutorial is about. You guys can figure out collisions yourself. But I just wanted to show you that they do work, and I'm in fact stuck in a tree. <laughs> Oh no, it's a nightmare. I'm stuck inside a tree. That's when your character becomes one with the platform. Bump, bump. Oh, look at that. Exactly what he wants. Bumping into the tree. Can't go through the tree. And yet, there he is. So what we would do in this case, and the reason I wanted to show you this at all, is just to demonstrate how you will go about fiddling with their mask. We can go ahead and take this mask, and instead of at 491, we'll do like 550 or 650. I find it surprising how how small uh, the masks on things like these trees wind up being. Uh, we can reduce this guy to like 700, something like that. When you finally get done with it, the collision areas for objects like trees winds up being really tiny so that your characters can interact with them in a more believable manner. See, we want him to be able to walk around the tree, and so far he can only go right there. So you'd make that mass for the tree uh, pretty darn tiny by the time you're done. Yeah. But anyway, there you go. The entire trick to doing this layering is that whole bit of code, depth equals negative y, again, on objects that move, whether that's a bad guy, arrows, uh, machine gun bullets, whatever you've got, those need to have it update on the step event all the time. The other objects, like these trees, rocks, pillars, your grandma, they just have to do it on the create event. Hope you guys have had a fun time. If this helped you at all, just leave me a thumbs up. That's all I ask for. And if you didn't enjoy it, please tell me why and what I got wrong. I'm sure I don't know everything. And uh, again, Brandon, Fold Up Games. Check out uh, foldupgames.com if you'd like to check out Shieldworthy. It's always being updated. Uh, and that's about it. You guys have a great day.